Hello everyone, this is Rune Weaver with Fumble Effects. And today I want to take a few minutes and show you our new roll tables. How to install them uh, in Foundry VTT, kind of as a tutorial for you. And where to get them at. So, stay tuned. Okay, everyone, what I've got here is Foundry Virtual Tabletop Open. Uh, you can do this in any world that you already own, but I'm going to create a world. I'm just going to call it Test. Brand new world we're going to do for 5e. Create world. We're going to launch our world. And open it up. And basically that's it for that. Now, you look over on your manage modules. I already have this installed. I'm going to backtrack and show you how to set it up. You should have FE roll tables show up in your module directory. So we're going to go ahead and close off Foundry. Okay, everyone, this is uh, where you pick up your uh, the Fumble Effects uh, roll tables at. This is my Ko-Fi page. And if you head over to the shop, there'll be a link there. I've got the Fumble Effects roll tables on here. Basically, just click it. Click Get Now check out now you need to be set up you can do this uh, with any way you want uh, they'll take PayPal but it's free you won't be charged for anything uh, it'll just take and walk you right through the information basically it'll take you to my download when you check out and you get into the link you'll get the roll table zip file just click on the link, download the file. Okay. When you download the file, it will basically look like this one here. Just unzip it, you'll get the zip file. Unpack it, you'll get the module JSON, the packs, and the artwork all in one file. And you want to take that file. Go into your Foundry folder, go into your Data tab, go into your Modules. And then you want to paste that file in the Modules directory. So you'd be Data Modules. <clears throat> uh, where'd I put it? Roll Tables. FE Roll Tables. That'll be that. And then there you should have, again, the artwork, the packs, and the JSON module. Once you've got that in there, start your foundry back up. And I'm going to go back. You can go back into your world. Go over to Manage Modules. And if you scroll in your list, if you don't have any modules in there, like a new world with no modules installed, it, it'll be easy to find. It'll be the only one in there. But anyway, check if you roll tables. Now, this is an option. You don't have to do this, but I recommend it that you also download and install Compendium Folders. Uh, and then the tidy UI. You don't have to have the UI for this, but it's just one of the ones I recommend. And then save. Yes. And Companion Folders also has to have LibWrapper. I forgot that, so we'll go back in. If you don't have LibWrapper, download it uh, from the module list in within Foundry. Turn LibWrapper on. Save module, yes. 
Okay, once you get that done, go over to your compendium packs. Click on it. Uh, the compendium module that you just uh, folders will order all this. Go to your roll tables. Click on your FE roll tables. It should show up there. If it doesn't show up, you didn't put it in the right folder uh, in a data file. It should look like this. You got the folder structure there. Click on the import. And I always do the merge by name and ID. Click yes. It will import all your information. Once you do that, you'll go to your roll tables, tables, tab, and you'll see it's already there. I think it'll automatically put you in there. These are your roll tables. Now, I've got critical hit tables for blunt weapons, which would be like your hammers and whatnot. If you want to use critical hits, edge weapons, and missile and thrusting weapons. I've got the 5e fumble table. I've also got a fumble table for those old school guys that like to still play second edition. I'll come back to those in just a moment. Okay, we have a hit location table. If somebody does a 20, natural 20 on an attack roll, and in my games, if they really want to know where they hit, here we go. It's a random table. You just roll. You roll the D20. It'll post your results in the uh, chat box. You roll the 19. So you hit him in the left hand. On a natural 20, you're going to cut his left hand off. It's going to be that much damage. Let's just roll another one just for curiosity. Upper right leg. Okay. You hit this guy in an upper right leg, it'll be up to the DM as to say, well, you cut his leg off completely, or you made a serious, serious gash in it. That's up to the DM. This just makes it faster and easier and adds a little bit more dynamics and description to your combat. You know? Uh, your player attacked your monster. All right, you hit it with a nat 20. Okay, well, where did I hit it and how bad did I do it? Well, you done an automatic, you done your damage, whatever, you, however the DM wants to do it. In my rules, I do double, but it's however. But so this is an easy way to do it, and it kind of spices it up. This one here, we rolled an 11, you hit him in the chest. So on a 20, I would say it's a massive gaping cut across the chest very cool very cool and my players love it uh fumble tables well let me go down here gemstone tables uh i've got gemstones from 100 gold piece all the way down these are taken out of the 5e srd player's manual or dm book whichever and if you want a random gem table now this table if you roll on this, it will choose a gem from one of the other tables and then post it in the chat box. So we rolled a 1d6. And if you look on here, a 1d6 will be a 5,000 gemstone piece. Uh, so it's a, a, this is this a Janethith. Okay. So you come back to the roll table and 5,000 gold piece table. There's your Genesis. So the way it chooses. That's very quick, something easy to do. And this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, whoop, my fumble tables. Now in my games, if you roll a natural one, you did what I call a fumble. 5e says it's DM discretion as to what happens. And I don't know about everybody else, but that's just lame as hell. So this is a way of putting randomness to a fumble. Something bad is going to happen, always, in my book. So you roll. Get your chat log. 
Well, you rolled an attack, you rolled the fumble. Guess what? You roll again, and you roll 19 or 20, you roll them. So, that's an oddity, but okay. We'll roll again. Okay? So, you rolled a 9 on your fumble. You roll your deck save with a DC 13. Uh, or you get a bug that flies in your eye. It makes you miss. Okay? Kind of fun. A little, little bit of comedy there. Boy, I keep rolling 19, so let's try something different. Okay, you rolled a 17 on this fumble. You rolled your first attack, you fumbled. You rolled a 1. Okay, random table, rolled a 17. 17 says you slip and fall. So while you were swinging in combat, your footing slipped. And you fell. And you banged your head on the ground. You roll a constitution save on a DC 13. And you're stunned if you fail for one to four rounds. You lose your attack for the next four rounds. <laughs> that creates a little havoc in combat. But it also creates a little randomness too. And it's pretty cool. Because now your buddies have to pick up the slack. You didn't expect it to happen. And me as a DM, I didn't expect it to happen. But it did. Okay, this is what's cool about the fumble table. Now, the 5e table, again, I simplified this off of the original one, which was the 2e. This one here, we rolled a 10. You roll your strength save or be grappled by your opponent. Okay, pretty neat. And for those with inquiring minds, I'll go ahead and show the second edition. Now, this one's a little bit more involved. There's a lot more to this one. And if you want to use this in 5e, that's, that's fine, but it's a little bit tricky. You know, if you DM, it's real good. So in this case, you roll a fumble. Your weapon broke when you hit whatever it is you hit, your opponent, whatever. If it's magical in nature, as in a weapon, arrow, or whatever, the energy from that weapon is released, and you get an explosion. And then it's up to the DM to pick the damage he wants to use. That is really cool. It's a little hard to use the second ones, second edition ones in 5e, but world again. Uh, lose grip on your weapon, roll deck save, to keep a grip, or you drop your weapon. That's pretty neat. You know, your hand got sweaty. That's what I would call it. This one here, you trip and fell, and you're stunned for one to six rounds. Well, okay. Uh, slip and roll decks, or you fall and stunned for one to four rounds. Okay. And this is one of the reasons we I went in and I edited these and kind of come up with some new ones for 5e. If you look on here, um, I've got hit self, half damage. Hit self, normal damage. You can slip, hit your friend for half damage. Be up to the DM to find the closest friend. Or if he wants to just say do a 1d4 for direction, okay? You critical hit yourself, critical hit your friend. If you're wearing full plate armor, your helm slips a little bit and your eyesight is blocked. Okay? You know, there's all kinds of options here. Your weapon breaks. Knocked away. Uh, you know... This is all kinds of cool things you can do with these roll tables. That's why I like using them. Uh, it's not mandatory. Any of the modules and adventures that I put out, you are free not to use them. But I made them free for anyone who wants them. You can download them. You know, you got something good to use there if you want to do it. So I just wanted to take a quick time, show you how to install it, what you're getting, a little overview. And I want you to have fun. I mean, that's what d and is all about, is having fun, man. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.